injury. Our job was to achieve correct union of the skin edges and achieve healing by primary intention. So this is a needle holder. How do we distinguish a needle holder from an artery person, a straight artery person? A needle holder will have a smaller jaw and a longer stem. And an artery person will be the opposite. It will have a longer, longer jaw and a longer and a smaller stem. Technique of holding these, these instruments. The ring finger should go through the lower ring, the thumb should go through the upper ring. The middle finger will control it at the junction of the ratchet, and the index finger will give control from the sides. This is the jaw, and this is the fulcrum, and this is the ratchet. Most instruments have three clicks of the ratchet. One, two, three, depending on how tight a grip we want. Okay. Coming to the needles which are used for surgery. Broadly, there are two types, a round-bodied needle and a cutting needle, depending on the cross-sectional appearance. For tough structures like skin, rectus sheath, linea alba, we use a cutting needle, while for delicate structures like peritoneum, mesentery, and intestine, we use a round body. Since we are dealing with the skin here, we are going to use a cutting needle. So, let's say the patient has come to us with an injury. First, we use the needle holder and hold it at the junction between the medial two-thirds and the lateral one-third. Two clicks is usually sufficient. If the needle still rotates, we can make a third click. This is a thumb forceps because it is held between thumb and index finger. Again, thumb forceps are of two types, broadly. Those which have got a tooth end, you will see that one end has got a single tooth and the other end has got a double tooth. This is to grasp the structure firmly between the two. This is called a tooth forcep. Tooth forcep is used for structures like skin, again, tough structures. The other type of thumb forcep is the plain thumb forcep, which does not have the tooth. And we use those for holding delicate structures like peritoneum, intestine, mesentery, etc. Okay, since we are dealing with the skin here, we are using a tooth thumb forcep and we are using a cutting needle. This is nylon or polypropylene, which is a synthetic material. Let's demonstrate first a simple suture. A simple suture. We have already held the needle in our needle holder. We go approximately half a centimeter away from the skin edge, pick up the whole skin without tooth forcep, take a full thickness bite without taking the needle out, pick up the other end and take a full thickness bite. And push it in a curved direction and catch hold of the other end and pull it out with a curving motion. And take two loops and tighten it. This is a simple stitch. Our aim of suturing is to ensure neat opposition of the epidermis and the dermis so as to give a healing by primary intention. This is the simplest and the fastest technique. If you are confident with it, this is pretty good. If you can achieve this, this is pretty good. Remember another thing? For nylon, we have to give at least six throws of the knot, otherwise it tends to slip. And each loop should be opposite to the previous one, as I am doing now, so that it does not slip. There you go. So this is a simple stitch. When it comes to cutting the thread, we should always cut approximately half a centimeter to three quarters of a centimeter away from the knot. Why? For two reasons. Number one, if you cut it too close to the knot, we might allow the knot to slip. And the second reason is, when we have to remove the sutures, we will have something to grasp it. We'll have something to grasp it. 
and then we can remove it by putting the pointed end of the scissors under the knot, loop of this knot thread and cutting and pulling it out. So for this reason, we must have sufficient length so that we can grasp it. For these two reasons, we should not cut it too close to the knot, usually this. So that was a simple stitch. Now let's demonstrate the vertical mattress. Again, the first step is pretty much the same. Hold it the way I demonstrated. Full thickness bite. Full thickness bite without taking it out. Push and pull it out with a curving motion. Next, hold it close to the tip. Hold it close to the tip. Now we have to go very minutely at the dermo-epidermal junction. This is the dermo-epidermal junction. And from this side, and the same thing from the other side also. We pick up this end, and again, dermo-epidermal junction. There we go. Push. And take it out. Now what we have achieved is union of the epidermis to the epidermis and the dermis to the dermis. Again, now we... <laughs> and again, put in the same number of throws. There we go. And so that was a vertical mattress switch. And now I'm going to demonstrate the third variety, that is the horizontal mattress. When do we do the horizontal mattress? When we want speed, quick, and when there's too much of profuse bleeding coming from the edges, which cannot be controlled, and we can sacrifice cosmetic beauty at the expense, at the expense of cosmetic beauty, we have to achieve speed and control of bleeding. The first step is pretty much the same. Take a full thickness bite, Shoulder the other end, take a full thickness bite. Both ends. Push, take it out. Keep one end short as usual. Now take again the reverse way and go a little far away. Go in the opposite direction. This way and Now when we tighten this, this may not be cosmetically as beautiful, but what we have achieved is, in one knot we have covered a big area and we have also stopped the bleeding in that place. And again tighten, put as many throws as are required, six throws for nylon, at least six throws for nylon. So this is horizontal mattress. And then hold it and again cut. So vertical mattress, horizontal mattress. So now all of you can practice.